Are you the type of person who goes with the flow, or are you more of a contrarian? It's more than amateur psychology, it just might play a big role in which of these smartphones you prefer. On today's comparison, it's more than just LG versus Samsung, it's outdoor versus indoor, utility versus beauty, function versus form. Galaxy S5 versus LG G3. These smartphones say so much before you even pick them up. Not to get all phone whispery on you, but you just need to look at them to see what they're saying. The Samsung product is familiar, congenial, safe. Even if you don't follow gadgets, you've seen this phone before, because it's everywhere. Now look at what LG is doing. The arced curve that gives the body the sense of an airfoil. The volume and power keys placed beneath the camera. The almost edge-to-edge -edge display. If the Galaxy S5 is the sturdy and reliable family sedan, the G3 is your friend's impish import you take out when you're looking for trouble. But if you find that trouble, you might rather have the Samsung phone with you. The Galaxy S5's stippled matte finish definitely takes a beating better than LG's faux metal semi-gloss. And the Samsung product is also rated for immersion in water in case things get nautical. It manages all this despite being thinner and lighter than the LG phone, and it also packs a bevy of active accessories for the healthy eating crowd. The Galaxy S5 is the phone you take with you on adventures into the wilderness, case or no case. The G3 is the phone you show off at the office water cooler. And when you're doing so, be sure to point out the Quad HD display, and you'll have to point it out. Yes, it's a much higher resolution than the Galaxy's, but it's almost impossible for a normal person to tell the difference. And Samsung's much brighter panel is more useful out in the daylight. Again, function versus form. Dive into those screens for a bit and get to know the ins and outs of the Android skins here, and you'll find more similarity than you might expect. Sure, there's a gap in style. LG uses a more subdued palette, and it's also further along in the flat, minimalistic thinking that dominates modern software. But these are both very elaborate skins, with a lot bolted on to the stock Android experience. Where Samsung excels is in multitasking. Its task switcher is easy to read and use, compared with LG, which gives you a choice between overcrowded and space-wasting. And Samsung's multi-window supports more apps and offers more interaction between those apps, than LG's similar dual window function. If you need to do more than one thing at once on your smartphone screen, Samsung's been the go-to choice for a while, and it's no different here. Where LG pulls ahead is in the thoughtful utility it's built into the smartphone experience. We've said it before, but a customizable home key row is something everyone should be doing. The ability to drop the notification shade with a tap or launch dual window with a single touch is just awesome. Also, using a tap to wake up the screen, or to put it to sleep, feels much more modern than mashing a physical button. And even LG's Q-Slide apps come in handy now and then. The Galaxy S5's camera edges out the G3's in resolution, but LG makes up for it with optical image stabilization, which lends it a much smoother viewfinder experience and a laser for faster focus. There's kind of an inversion of the greater software trends when it comes to the cameras. Here, it's Samsung that offers more options, so many that you're almost overloaded with them. While LG's viewfinder is so spartan, you're left wanting much more. Neither extreme is ideal, but on features, they're roughly the same. Each offers HDR, each offers dual shot, and each offers selective focus after capture. Side by side, photos look awfully similar in most conditions, with a slight edge in color and clarity on the Samsung device. Bright daylight results in really nice captures, but neither of these is any good, really, in low light without the flash, no matter what stabilization settings are used. Indoor video results are comparable and pretty noisy in 1080p, with the Samsung device having a bit more trouble staying in focus. Outdoors, there's not much difference either, with the LG product being just slightly smoother in handheld mode thanks to its OIS. 
there's a much bigger difference in audio, which in this comparison sounds muddy on the Samsung phone compared to the much clearer capture on the G3. This is my booth, and it's the Survival Boutique. We are doing weapons and tools for survival in the Helter Skelter world of today. Our G3 review unit is a South Korean model being tested in the US, so some of our comparison notes, like endurance, will have to wait until we get an American review unit. What's not changing anytime soon, though, is the fact that each of these phones runs the latest processor, powered by a removable battery, and backed up by an expansion slot that can carry a crazy amount of media. The G3 runs hotter than the S5, but each device performs very well at even the most demanding gaming and browsing. It's not out of the ordinary to see the occasional hiccup in software. These are still heavy skins, after all. And in LG's case, there's an awful lot of pixels being pushed. But typically, these are very fluid devices. And throughput on AT&T's LTE network in Greater Boston is, as usual, quite speedy. Last but not least, acoustics. Put them to your ear and the parody continues. On AT&T, callers sound the same to us, and they say we sound the same to them. That goes for sound quality over speakerphone, too, at least on their side. On ours, the speaker is more muffled on the Samsung device, but they're both pretty loud, even if they are rear-firing loudspeakers. There's a lot of common ground here, which comes as little surprise in this age of ever-increasing uniformity across high-end smartphones. The real difference lies in the hardware, not in specs, but in build, and in what kind of user you are. If you're an active person, apathetic about style and hard on your possessions, if you think of your smartphone more as a tool than an accessory, the Galaxy S5 was made for you. If, on the other hand, you're gentle with your gadgets and you've got an eye for detail and an appreciation for good design, the G3 will be a better fit for your fancy pocket. There's so much more to know about each of these phones, and fortunately, we've got a full review of each one linked in the description below. Also down there, a like button and a link to subscribe. Please avail yourself of both if you enjoyed this video. And most importantly, thanks for joining us. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. We'll see you on the next one. Galaxy S5 versus LG G3. Levels uh, face the right direction. Oh, where is the coffee? I look like some animal exploded on my head. <laughs>